everyone. Happy Thursday. Hello, hello. I've been talking to a lot of you today through comments and uh, so I couldn't wait to get on here and paint with you tonight and do something fun. Uh, my name is Pam Savage and I am owner of Young at Heart Creations where I love to paint, create, do just about try anything at least once when it comes to crafting. So we're going to use this beautiful piece of material tonight. Uh, this is the Re Drummond, the, um, oh, what is she called? Pioneer Woman. This is one of her patterns um, that I picked up at Walmart. So pretty. And she also had uh, this print, which I absolutely love. They were about $8 for a yard. Um, I think this is a yard. Yes. And then look at this beautiful spring colors. Oh, isn't that just pretty? I would love to have a dress made out of that. So I got those three, but I thought tonight we would try something that I've never done. Let me go ahead and get you pulled up here on my Facebook, uh, on my iPad, so I can see comments. I'm always keeping my fingers crossed that this is going to work. Sometimes it's very slow so let me see if I can get it I'm gonna get out of it and then back in it because it's been giving everybody trouble from what I'm hearing all right young at heart creations that would be me okay there we go and turn the sound off because I don't want to hear me <laughs> I hope you want to hear me, but I don't. Hi, Lynn. Thanks for hopping on so quick. So this is what we'll be using tonight, and we're going to be doing it um, with a method that I've, I've never done before. We're going to do some painting on um, a rooster. We did a rooster, I think, or a chicken, or a rooster last week. Maybe. I can't remember. I've painted so many things, I'm not sure what we've done. But we're going to do this big old guy tonight. Um, this is more of a chicken, I think. So we're gonna do it. Uh, we're gonna do this one as a chicken and not a rooster. Hi, Miss Crystal. So we're gonna be doing this big guy tonight. Let me back up a little bit. He's pretty big. I got him at Canton. Normally, I am painting on uh, Revolution plywood. This is MDF wood, so it's a real smooth, smooth surface. There's no grain in it at all. It's a pressed wood. Um, so, and I haven't painted on this wood very often, so we'll see, uh, what's, what's going to happen with that. But isn't that gorgeous? So pretty. So what we're going to do is like we did the napkin on the rooster the other day with the Mod Podge and, uh, napkin, we're going to try to do this with the material and the Mod Podge and parchment paper and the little iron method. So I'm either going to make it pretty or I'm going to burn it. <laughs> Hi, DJ. So I'm going to, hopefully I won't set the house on fire. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it on so that I won't forget and it'll be hot and ready for us. So I've got enough to do that and then had this much left of the material. So, I mean, you get... A full yard it may even be a little more the yard I need to read on the package but I've got enough to do several more and um, so what I'm gonna do is I don't have a bell I need a bell but I told you when uh, let me my daughter's trying to call let me get rid of that <laughs> When I hit each hundred mark on my followers that um, I hit each hundred mark, we send out some happy mail. And so we've been at 600 and something, it seems like forever. Well, in the last week I have gotten, just in the last six days or so, I've gotten 37 newbies on here. So uh, that's my bell. There we go, we'll use my water glass. <laughs> Yay! So I am over 700. Uh, last I checked this morning, it was 713. So what I will do tonight is um, you have to comment on here. You don't you didn't just say hello or I'm here, but uh, especially if you're a newbie, tell tell us your name and where you're from, 
And if you're shy and you don't want to carry on a conversation, that is perfectly fine too. This is a quiet place or it's a chatty place, whichever you choose. But what I will do is everybody that has commented and sprinkled, sprinkled is the word for S-H-A-R-E on Facebook. So if you will sprinkle this video and comment that you have sprinkled, uh, just to let me know that you're here, then I'm going to send out some happy mail in the next couple of days. I'll take everybody's name. Hi, Carol. Hello, hello. Hi, Stephanie. Uh, welcome. Welcome to my craft room and my home and my little world away from the world. Um, so what I will do in the, uh, I will choose a name tomorrow and I will take all the names of everybody that commented and sprinkled this video and put them in a little can or something and then I'll draw a name. One of the things that will be in your uh, happy mail is I will cut off a piece of this. I'm not going to send you all of it because I still have things that I want to do with it. But I will cut you off a nice little piece of this. That will be one of the things in your happy mail. If you've gotten happy mail from me before, you know that um, I send out some pretty nice little happy mails. It's not just a couple of little stickers and, you know, and that's fine too. I mean, that makes your day and a card is wonderful. But I usually put a few few goodies in there and I always put something in that I have hand painted. So you will be receiving something that I've hand painted. I don't like to take pictures of what I'm sending before I send it because I want the recipient to be excited uh, and surprised when they get it. So after they've received it, then I will post a picture of what I sent. But I will let you know who wins the drawing tomorrow. So welcome, welcome. Let's get started. Again, I have never done this before. I've Mod Podged with napkins and paper. I have never Mod Podged with material. And I certainly have not done the method with the iron and with the, um, make sure it's getting hot. Yes, it is. With the iron and with uh, parchment paper. Parchment paper from Walmart, just in the kitchen area by the foil. So I've watched it done. I think I remember how they did it, but we'll see. It's either going to be a flip or a flop. Looks like I got some horns sticking out here. <laughs> okay, so what I did first was I took the chicken, I laid the material on top of the chicken, uh, right side up, how I, how I wanted my chicken to face. And I just laid the material down, laid the chicken on top of the material. I mean, put the material on top of it, right side up, just laid it across. And then I flipped it over and traced around the chicken with a pencil or a pen, either one. I didn't do a pen. I used a pencil because I didn't want it really showing through the, the material. So I've traced it. You can still see a little bit of the pencil mark because I didn't go right up to that line. So I traced out the shape of the chicken. And then I painted, and this is something you wouldn't have to do. Now with a napkin, if you don't paint it white, it, um, it tends to pick up the, it will pick up the colors um, on your background. So I went ahead and painted it white and I just went ahead and painted the whole thing white. I don't always paint my, my pieces white. Uh, if I'm using yellow or something like that, I, I always do, just, just to give it a good background and make the colors pop. Okay, so I'm gonna paint the chicken first. So what I did after I put the base coat on, I laid, and I'm gonna bring you down here just a little bit. I laid the material after I cut it, laid it on here and just kind of took I uh, took a pencil and just laid it right where I wanted it so I would know where my paint lines were going to go. Now on the rooster that we did last week, we had the head was uh the head was black, but tonight I'm going to since this is such a pretty springy colors, I am going to whoops, my iron fell. Let me get it before it burns my carpet. We don't want any burnt carpet, do we? <laughs> All right, let me see. Let me fix a better place to set this right quick. Definitely don't want it falling down on us. Okay. No holes in the carpet. <laughs> so I laid it down after I got it cut, made my little pencil marks where we're going to be painting. And then um, instead of the, the black, we're going to use the um, 
I'm going to use this as the head, um, the head, and we'll also we'll go ahead and do red for the comb, and then I'm going to use yellow. It is a this is in uh, Anita's, and it's hay. It's just hay yellow. So let's see what let's see if this turns out, y'all. This is uh, I'm either getting brave or careless. I'm not sure which doing things for the first time with y'all. But I want you to see the process and to see that, you know, it doesn't always go perfect or easy. Um, one other thing I did after I, and you don't have to do so much on this uh, MDF board because it doesn't have grain that raises the wood. Hi, Laura. Hi, Sandy. Thanks for hopping on. If y'all are newbies, just put newbie out beside your name. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. So what I do when it, when it's wood, after I put the very first coat on, the base coat on, I will take either wax paper or just a piece of uh, grocery sack paper, lunch sack paper, and I will rub it down to get that grain down to get it smooth. You don't have to do that so much on the MDF. I did it anyway because I wanted to make sure that it was good and smooth. <clears throat> Not sanding it, just smoothing it. Okay, so what we're going to do, I'm going to lay this aside. I did iron it. It did have some wrinkles in it, so I ironed it. And let's go ahead and get our uh, base coat on our chicken. Well, this is kind of a big guy, so I'm going to have to be switching you around a little bit so that you can see. Get my material back. I don't want to get any paint on it. Okay, so we're going to start with, let me take my pencil. I did not mark off where the comb will be. So let's kind of start where that beak ends and just very lightly make a curve where that comb will be. And I didn't go quite down far enough on that. There we go. Okay, so that will be red. So um, the red that I use, this tomato red or Tuscan red, those will both cover really, really well. So let's go ahead and let's go ahead and do our face color. And we need to also go right around this beak. Where our face color is going to stop. This is Spa Blue, Deco Art Spa Blue. Love, love, love. It's one of my favorite colors. That's what we did the little chicks in. Um, a few weeks ago, and I'm just going to use a probably a number six flat. The numbers are off of it. I've used it so much, <clears throat> and I apologize for my voice <clears throat> tonight. Allergy season for sure. Okay, let's get you down here where we can see if the chicken is from Michael's. I just bought one. Love this idea. I was going to paint it and distress it. Oh, that'd be pretty too. This one is not from Michaels. It's from Build Across. I follow uh, Build Across on Facebook, and they had a big sale. They go to our Canton Flea Mark, Flea Market every month, the first Monday of every month. I'm gonna erase that pencil line just a little bit because with this color, that's a little bit dark. Um, and they were having a sale on them, so I bought. I think I bought four. I haven't been to Michael's in a while. I need to go check them out. I don't usually go to Michael's unless they're having a really good sale because they're a little more expensive than, or ours is anyway, than um, Hobby Lobby. Now, is there going to be a turquoise blue chicken in real life? Um, maybe. I don't know. There's so many different breeds. Beautiful show chickens. There may be, I don't know, but I kind of doubt it. But you know, when you're crafting, you can do whatever you want to. <clears throat> so again, if you're new, be sure and tell us your name and where you're from. I live about 60 miles north of Dallas, Texas. 
I'm going to come down just a little further than that line because I want to make sure that that material covers. I also did the edges of this with my base coat brush. I did it white all the way around. To do the edges, I don't scrape it down. I pat it on. That way it doesn't get on the back. See, I don't have anything on the back of it. So if you will just pat it, this guy's big. Get even with my line there. And then just pat it on. And then smooth it out on the top. Covers it really well and uh, does not get any on the back. Okay, let's dry that and put a second coat on it. Hi, Heather. Hi, Miss Christy. I'm coming to see you. Coming to see you the end of May and the first week of June, I think. I'll have to private message you and uh, let you know afterwards. I'll have to look at my calendar. But we're coming to Laurel again for a vacation. And we are definitely going to get together one day while we're there. So we'll have to figure that out. Got to see my little Nolan. Okay, so that's nice and dry. And let's add one more coat. Laurel, Mississippi is the hometown of um, Ben and Aaron Napier. They have the show um, Hometown. We went there last September and spent a few days and just absolutely loved it. We did not get to meet them, but we met several of the staff all throughout town and, at, and then at his um, shop. We got to go there. It was just such a pleasant little town. My husband just loved it. So we're gonna go back and spend a little while. Okay, so I showed you how I do the edges. I will do the edge wherever there's a color. Uh, I will probably go around and do um, up here. I'll do the same color. But just for time's sake for the live, I'm not going to go all the way around the edges. Um, on the chicken, I will do that off camera. So I don't keep you on here for three hours. Y'all know I'm slow. I get it done, but it does take me a little longer than others sometimes. <laughs> Thank you, Crystal, for sprinkling. Your name will go in the uh, in the drawing. Let's see who else we got on here. You'll drop everything to see me. Yay! <laughs> Even David said, "Oh yeah, let's go do some shopping." There was one of the shops there that we didn't get to go to. I think it was something called something the chandelier. It was closed. We're hoping they have most of the construction done by the time we get there. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and do the yellow next. Well, I'm going to do the red last because that red gets in the brush and gets all the water pretty dirty. So let's go ahead and do the beak and the feet. Now, what I did for the feet, these feet were a little bit different than the ones I had been doing. So I made this foot come over this one. So what I did was draw it out, the, uh, the outline, and then just kind of figure it out on... Uh, on this card how I wanted the feet to go so just to give me something to reference by now I could put carbon paper under this and uh, Trace it on there that way, but I'm just gonna freehand it. It's just a few little straight lines So um, I'm gonna sit that there where I can see it This cut to me almost looked like a webbed foot, but there's not a lot that I can do about that um, But I think it's gonna be cute. I think it'll I think it'll be just fine with the colors that we're using. So we're gonna use our hay, Anita's hay. Typically I use the Deco Art, but I've got paints that I've had for a while that I'm trying to use up. I don't want them getting 
too old and not able to get any paint out of them, so I'm trying to use them up. Okay, can y'all see that okay? Let's go ahead and do the, the beak first. And I know it's kind of in the shadow of the foam with the ring light. I've been trying to work on that. I may end up getting a second ring light. I'm, I'm understanding now why I see people with um, more than one ring light because it gets rid of those shadows. All right, I'm going to turn her around and just go right over the top. Oh, we still, we've got to shade our blue. I wasn't thinking about that. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and do the beak here. Just pat, pat, pat. Pat, pat, pat. And again, I'll finish that part of it on the rest of it off camera. So let's go ahead and hold that drying and get our feet on here. Okay, now I can see the pencil line, but my material's going over it. So we should be fine for that. A little hair in it. I have been all day long in training courses, business training courses, paint party training courses. So I've been since this morning working on homework and training videos. So I was ready to come sit down and paint. Okay, definitely going to take two coats on that. This is a heavy board, this MDF. And I, I had remembered or told myself I was going to remember what that stood for. I think it's manufactured something fiber maybe? I don't know. I don't remember. So if anybody on here knows what MDF stands for, put it in the comments. Did anyone watch the interview I did with Tamara Bennett yesterday? Southern Adornments Decor. She's opening her membership for her Painter's Clubhouse. Today's the last day for that, by the way. Well, we were having a very good interview until the internet started acting up. It was incredibly windy here yesterday. And then my husband, I didn't realize, he got on live also on a Zoom call with his work. And when he got on his call, it started knocking me off of mine. So, but we, neither one of us could get off, so we both, we had to stay on. His did fine, but if you watched the interview, you saw how it did me. So I'll have to be careful and not try not to go live when he's live or when he's live in his work group. But another big announcement. I'm so, so excited. So super, super excited. As of November, this coming November, my husband is going to retire, and he's going to be working for me, with me, for me. He's going to be working in my business. He's going to be uh, doing all the technical part of it, uh, the business end part of it. That's going to be such a huge relief for me. I am not a technical person. do not like that part of it. So he's going to take over that part of it. He's going to help me with cutting my wood. Um, I've been cutting all my wood, but he's going to help me with that now uh, after November. So we're, we're just so excited. It is great. 
I'll be his boss. <gasps> Just thought of that. I'll be his boss for a change. <laughs> so we are both very excited about it. Hi, Cindy. Thank you. The interview, I didn't cry. I was so proud of myself. I didn't cry, but, but Tamara did, and, which is fine because I always cry. <laughs> MD stood for, but she said it stood for <laughs> medium density fiberboard. Thank you, Christy. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, Miss Amber. I am doing my paint party training through, it's called Paint Party Headquarters with Heidi Easley. Hi, Zachary. Hi, Miss Debbie Secting. We've got a lot on here tonight. Thank y'all for commenting, so I will put your name in the drawing. All right, so let's get this yellow is a little thin, a little bit different brand than what I normally use. Make sure you're in camera. It's Anita's, and I usually use the Deco Art, but just trying to use up some of my... Um, I don't want to say off-brand, but it's not the brand I typically use. Because I will be replacing everything with the Deco Art. I just love the consistency of it. And being in Tamara's Painter's Clubhouse, I get a discount on it when I order it from their website. Okay, and while those two coats are drying, we may have to put one more coat on there. Let's go ahead and let's shade our head here. I'm going to shade it with, um, this is Apple Barrel Laguna. So I think it'll make a pretty shading color. Just dark enough that I think it will show up really well. So I'm getting my brush. This is a flat. My shader brushes I don't use to um, to base coat with. I just use them for shading. And this is a Royal and Lang Nickel, number ten flat. I got it at Walmart. Okay, so let's put a little bit of that color out. It's not going to take much. We don't have much of a space here to work on. I'm going to go ahead and get, since we did dry this, I'm going to put just a little bit of moisture on it. Just around those edges. It dries pretty quick underneath this uh, light of mine, but it'll leave us enough moisture. And I'm going to just put that base coat color on the flat and then on the bottom just in a little triangle, just on the very tip. I'm gonna put a little bit of that, that shading color, um, that dark color on there. And then we're just gonna blend it in. Still just a little bit wet. Ooh, that color's pretty with it. So all you chicken lovers out there that you raise chickens, do you have any actual chickens that have these colors in their wings? I know my daughter-in-law, when they um, raised chickens, I was amazed at some of the coloring in them. Okay, we're just feathering it out, fading it out, blending it out. All right, I'm gonna turn, turn her around. Get a little more of that color, base coat color on there, and then load again. Oops, I loaded on the wrong edge, so I need to reload, or I'm going to have a double float line, and I don't want that. There we go. see several names on here that are wonderful painters. I 
I am working really hard, and it's probably going to be next year, but I just want you to be thinking about it. And I'm, uh, I've brought it up before, but um, I'm really thinking about starting a membership. So I'm trying to learn all the ins and outs of that. Because now, with my husband retiring, I'll have somebody to handle the technical part of it for me. Woohoo! I'm going to like this, I think. <laughs> I'm going to put him to work. He may decide he doesn't want to retire when I give him my list. And that's not even counting my personal around-the-house honeydew list. <laughs> All right, so I just reloaded. Gonna come down around this beak. Feather it out. Yeah, just a little bit more. I'm just starting where I left off on that other one, on the other line here. You don't want a harsh line. You just want a real soft, you can use blending gel, floating medium. I tend to just add a little bit of water to it, just to my bristles. Okay, and now we have some blending. So I'm gonna go back through here and just feather it out a little bit. Soften it up. Now your base coat color, um, it looks wet right now. It looks like it's a different color, but it, it's not. It's your base coat color, so it's going to dry the same color as uh, your, your base coat here, and so it'll just all blend in. And I will probably go back through and do that shading color on the edges here. Um, that will be underneath the, or on the edge that will match the material. Okay, let's go ahead and put another, let's see if I've got, I'm going to put a coat of that, of my primary yellow, Deco Art, and see if just one more coat will cover that. About out of that one. Getting empty. Oh no, time to go to Hobby Lobby. Or actually, I will end up ordering it and some more. Okay, sorry, trying to keep you in camera here. It's a little bit brighter yellow, but it covers better. It's just, the Deco Art is just, it's not near as thick as, um, Folk art paint, but it's much thicker than, definitely thicker than Apple Barrel. Apple Barrel is really good for hand lettering because the consistency is very thin. But Deco Art and Ceram Coat both have a very nice consistency to them. Okay, that covered it up. So let's go ahead and do the beak, just so we're matchy-matchy. Pat, pat, pat. Okay, and so while we've got that color on there, our base coat color, let's go ahead and shade our beak and our legs. Put that base coat, and I'm going to put just a little bit of, it is called Antique Gold, Deco Art Antique Gold. Now let's see if it's dark enough. If it's not dark enough, the material out of the way. If it's not dark enough, I will go to a brown. Okay, 
Okay, just dark enough that I think we'll be okay. Okay, and I'm gonna take my little have a small liner brush and then I'm just gonna make a line to kind of separate the beak. Let's see what it looks like. To make it look like top and bottom. There we go. Okay, and let's put a nostril so she can breathe. Okay, and that's about all we're going to do to the beak. Probably doesn't show it much on camera, but um, it does here. So I'm kind of using the softy colors. Now I'm gonna—I'm not gonna dry that dot completely. I just want to set it so it doesn't run everywhere if I tilt. Okay, let's get one more coat here so we can just get it damp and do our shading. Now, I have not had supper yet, so if y'all hear my stomach growling, I apologize. I, I cooked it. I've got it all ready. So it got my, I could smell it all cooking. So it got my stomach going. I'm so excited. Now the next hundred mark for a happy mail will be getting 800 follower, getting to 800. Nay, nay, more. Oh, <laughs> I thought, what? Hi, Marilyn. Okay, you've got to go make supper for the family. We'll come back and watch replay. Have a wonderful evening. Okay, thank you, Sandy. Thank you, thank you. Your retirement life will be so much fun. I retired a year and a half ago, so now it's my husband's turn. Oh, I love Heidi, too. She's so sweet. I've met her a couple of times, and she just lives about an hour from me. So, um, we are. Thank you for looking that up for me. Christy said uh, that he looked it up for me. Thank you. But uh, she's been at a couple of Tamara's lives that I've gone to, and just, oh, my goodness, just a ball of energy. I wish I had a fourth of her energy. <laughs> But she is, um, she's just amazing. So I bit the bullet and joined her uh, group. And we'll see. I'm hoping I can learn some things that I can pass on to you guys. Okay, don't know if this part here will show or not. Um, the material may come over it, but I'm going to go ahead and just shade it just in case some of it should stick out. Okay, now I'm going to refer to my picture because this is kind of backwards from the other uh, feet that I've done. So I just want to make sure that I get it right. So we're going to make, uh, we're going to separate them right there. Let's get it a little bit darker. Okay, so that one is going behind. This back, this is the back one going behind. And let's go ahead and shade in the front here. So I spent about five hours today watching videos, taking notes, 
and I must tell you that I was very motivated after watching them. Same way I always am with Tamara. I just don't know where they get all their energy. I don't know how many Heidi has now, but I know Tamara has at least at least 13 employees. And um, she's only been doing it, I think. She started her business four years ago, five years ago. Okay, so I'm just shading uh, around the edges. A little bit too much of that base coat color, so it was blending in too much. Now this would work also with a darker brown. And I know it's probably not showing up a lot for you, but it is really showing up in person. Christy, I'm going to stop if it's convenient for Erica. Maybe even if it's not convenient. I can't stand to be that close and not see her. I mean, I'll see her in July when we go to the live event at Tamara's live event. But anyway, we're going to be spending the night in uh, where Erica Wallace lives with Wallace House Designs. So I'm hoping to get to see her as well. I'm ready for another retreat. trying to do this so y'all can see it. I was trying not to turn it around, but I may have to clean it up a little bit and turn it around. Put some on that edge. Okay, and now I'm going to take my liner brush. And just make some little wiggly marks. Some little wrinkles. If I have wrinkles in my legs, it's going to have wrinkles in her legs. If you look at a chicken's legs or a duck's legs, they do have wrinkles. Okay, and I'm going to make some little toe marks here. Okay, and that's a quick, quick set of legs. I'm going to save that because I've got several more of these that I'm going to paint different ways. So I will save that. Okay, so the next thing that we have to do, and we'll do some highlight, highlights here in a minute too, but we need to um, do the red. I think this tomato red will cover okay. Um, sometimes it's a good idea to put, um, oops, let me turn it this way, to put gray under your red, but I think this tomato red will do okay. I'm not going to put much out because we can always put more. I'm going to go back to my other flat brush. I don't like to use my shader for anything but shading. <clears throat> All right, I think you can see it there. Okay, and I'm just going to right up to that headline.
wanted to remind everybody that April 15th is the last day to register. We had another one register. Um, oh, she's going to register. She hasn't registered yet, but um, she's confirmed that she's coming. So we had another one yesterday. So I think that's seven. Very excited about it. It's definitely going to take a couple of coats. And again, this is, I've not used MDF very often. Um, and it does soak up the paint differently than what just your regular wood does. It looks like two coats is going to be enough. I may go ahead and put three on it just to be sure. And then I will go around and pat, pat, pat. Just around the edges. But I can do that off camera in just a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna dry it and I am gonna put one more coat of that red. Just notice, boo, my fingernail polish clashes with that red, doesn't it? <laughs> I don't typically wear fingernail polish this bright. But I just grabbed it and that's what we got. Okay, I'm going to take a little bit of Napa Red, Deco Art Napa Red, and just do a little bit of shading and then we'll do some highlights. Got to do the eye also. So I know we've got newbies on here tonight. So if you are close enough, I live in Sherman, Texas. And again, it's about 60 miles north of Dallas. I am hosting a paint party on April the 28th. That's a Thursday at 11 o'clock, 11 a.m. At uh, It's going to be held at one of our local banks here. Only $35. And we will be painting... We will be painting a box like this. We're going to be painting, we're going to be doing some Mod Podging, uh, we're going to be painting little pots to go inside to hold your paint brushes, combs, lots of different things that you can use it for. It's going to be very, a very easy paint, very easy piece to do. If you're a seasoned painter, you can add anything you want to it. We'll be doing it in the color of your choice. Um, so everybody can choose their own colors. The technique will all be the same. But we can use, uh, you can use whatever color you want to go with your decor. Because I don't want you to paint something and then that's not going to match anything I have. What am I going to do with it? So we'll do it in your colors. Okay, so we've got our shading on there. Get that red out of there. And again, I'll do the edges off, um, off camera when we finish. It would just take a little long to get down in the crevices. So I know there's some other things going on tonight. So I'm trying to not take up your whole night. Okay, so let's put a little bit of white out. Just get some little highlights, and then we'll do the eye, and then we'll do the fun part. I hope it works. 
I hope. I've not done it before. But I don't see why it wouldn't. But we'll see. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and, and do some highlighting here. Even though I haven't done the edges yet, that won't matter. I can do the edges um, afterwards. So let's just put a little here. And just around that little hump. Maybe put one... There, and let's put a little one on that beak. Put another one right there. And then let's go down here on the feet and just put some highlights here and there. We'll put them over our wrinkles. We're gonna highlight the wrinkles. I feel like that's the story of my life. All of my wrinkles are highlighted. Just enough to give it some highlight. And let's put an eye on right quick. Now let me grab something to show you different eyes, different choices. I'm going to do an open eye on this one. But you've got all kinds of eyes you can do. Sideway eyes are a little different. So this is the one we'll do tonight. Open. But you can also do it closed. And like she's sitting on her nest, you can put some little eggs or chickens underneath. Oh, and I wanted to show y'all, I've, I've gotten my new stamp. And I stamped this one, but you can't hardly read it. After it dried, it bled into the, the grain of the wood. So, and I had not sealed it on the back yet. So I sealed this one with some Mod Podge, and you can read, read it much, much better. So I just need to be sure and seal it before um, I stamp. Okay, so I'm going to take a pencil and just do a sideways eye. Let's put her eye about right here. And I'm going to do a... just kind of a sideways V. I'm going to kind of curl it up, and then I'm going to bring the eyelash down. Okay, so just a sideways V. Let me get you under there. And then we're going to just bring out the eyeball. I'm going to come back just a little bit from that eyelash. Sorry, making sure I'm on camera here. Forward out, just a big parentheses, and then come down smaller and a small parentheses the other direction. Okay, and then we'll use our, our liner brush to make our eyelashes. We're going to need black for that, and I'm just using Lamp Black Deco Art Lamp. Won't take much. And for this, I'm going to use my small liner brush. I'm going to go ahead and this space right here behind the eyeball, we're going to put white. So 
So I'm just going to go right behind that little parentheses that we just did. Just follow your line. And you've got a triangle. And just fill it in. And use whatever brush you're most comfortable with. Let's draw that and put one more coat. And then we're going to put a little cheek before we do the eyelashes. Okay, so let's fill that in. Grab some cheek color. I'm going to keep it a little bit soft. Um, it's poodle skirt. Sorry, I didn't even think about getting that color out before I started. Okay, we'll use poodle skirt pink. And we'll just float just a little bit of a cheek there. So I'm going to go back to my floating flat brush. And got just enough of that base coat color. And I'm going to put just a small amount of that pink on there. on Just on that the corner right here. And then we're going to go right under that bottom eyelash line. Just to give her a little cheekbone. Some rosy in her cheek. Okay, let's finish out the eye with black. We're going to do the eyeball. And again, I've got that liner brush. I'm going to outline it and then we'll fill it in. And I'm flattening out my brush when I'm coming down. You could use a little bit larger brush to do it. I just had this one out and it it's working. Okay, I'm gonna draw that right quick. Hi Miss Rhonda. Yes, Erica has a lot of energy. Hi, Miss Peggy. And yes, it is heavier. Nay, nay, I don't remember seeing your name on here before. Um, if you're new, welcome, welcome. I appreciate everybody being on. I say they've got a lot of energy, but I have to remember that they are half my age, too. So, <laughs> I know that has something to do with it. I had a lot more energy when I was in my 30s, too. Okay, so now I'm going to water down. My black just a little bit. 
just want it kind of inky. And then I'm just going to roll my little liner brush. Might have gotten too much water in it, we'll see. So I'm just going to roll it out to get it to a point. And then we're going to make some eyelashes. So to do the eyelashes, I'm going to start at the point of the V, of the sideways V, and, and then just kind of flick them out. Okay, let's we'll see if you can see that. I'm going to bring it up just a little bit. Okay, see? I just, one stroke, just flicked it out. And I'll do the same on the bottom. We're going to put some pretty material on it for you ladies that have just joined us. We're going to pretty her up here in just a second. But let's go ahead and get these eyelashes done. She doesn't look that big, but she is long. So she's taking up most of my table here. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing on the bottom. And we've got a pretty base for our eyelashes. Okay, so I'm going to start. I'm going to do the same thing all the way down. I'm going to do one. Here's our long one. And then I'm going to make a short one. And then another long one. Short one. And long one. Then we'll do the same thing. Now, the bottom one, I kind of have to pull it towards me. Just the, the direction that it's going. Okay, so we're going to come down. Long one, short one, short one, and long one. Okay, I'm going to draw that and put the dot in, and then we're ready to put our material on. And again, if you're just hopping on, I'm going to finish the edges off camera, because I know a lot of you have another live that's starting here in just a minute that you're wanting to be a part of. So we're going to finish this really quick here. Well, I don't know how quick it'll be. We're going to put our dot so she can see, she needs a twinkle in her eye. So you can use the end of your uh, paintbrush. I have a daughter that I bought at Hobby Lobby. My white's just about dry. But I think I can get enough out of it. Okay, let's dry that just a little. Just so it doesn't go running anywhere. She looks very plain right now. She is about to brighten up. Okay, fingers crossed that this works. I'm going to put my paint up there because we're done with the paint. I'm going to be using Mod Podge matte finish and oops I put the my brushes in the floor when that iron was getting too hot or fell off so I'm going to use a three quarter inch flat to do my Mod Podge on so let's go ahead and get it on I don't do this with the napkins 
because I kind of like the wrinkles in the napkins. I like the texture that it gives. We're going to see what this does. Hopefully it's going to work. I was told you need to let the Mod Podge dry just a little bit before you do the uh, technique. So I'm going to go ahead and get it on here. I'm going to go right down to my lines, my edges. Sure, we'll have to come and do some of the edges again once we start putting the material on. Here I can see some spots that I missed. This, um, if you were putting this on a color, you would be able to tell that it looks looks like milk. It looks like Elmer's glue, but it dries crystal clear. Do you like that crystal? Crystal clear. dries really fast under the light. I just want to make sure I get everything covered. And then we're going to keep our fingers crossed that it works. Okay, so I'm going to dry it just a little bit. Stick my lid back there so that doesn't dry. I don't want to bubble it up, so I don't want it to get really hot uh, with this dryer. I don't know how dry you're supposed to get it. Anyone done this before? <laughs> dry dry I'm gonna say that it is dry enough make sure my iron is still hot Yes, it is. It's on the highest setting, which is what I was told it needed to be. Okay, so get our piece and make sure we get it the right direction. Okay, I'm going to stand up a little bit so I can kind of see where we're going with this. I want to make sure we get it covered. And I cut it pretty close to the edge so that I didn't have to worry about sanding it off or anything. Everything's covered there. Okay, I'm going to lay the parchment paper. And as far as I could tell, there was not a right side or a wrong side to this parchment paper. Oh, 
both sides feel the same to me, so <laughs> we're experimenting. All right, I'm going to hold it in a spot for just a few minutes, a few seconds. Let it, what it's doing is reactivating, from what I understand, it's reactivating that dry Mod Podge. So this is such pretty material. So whoever gets their name drawn tomorrow is going to get some, some of this material. It does get hot, that's for sure. I'm kind of working my way from the center outwards. And I'm pressing a little bit, putting a little bit of pressure. I'm not going to put a feather, anything for a feather, because I don't want to cover up the pretty material. You might could put something bling bling or feathery looking. But um, I think this material is busy enough that it really doesn't need anything. I love this little iron though. It just fits right in the palm of your hand. I got it at Walmart. Um, I have another one that's still in the box that will be one of the door prizes at the paint party. So some lucky winner is going to win one. And now you'll know what to do with it, or one of the things anyway. I've been seeing them used several different ways. Okay, I think I'm going to take up the paper and see what we've got. Moment of truth. And I can reuse this as well. Oh, it's so smooth. And it's definitely stuck down. So I think it worked. All right, let me pull you up. Get you pulled up here and I'll show you what she looks like. And again, I've got to do the edges. Oh, but isn't she pretty? I think she's cute. So it fit right to the edge. I've got just a little bit that sticking out on the back here, but um, that's not going to bother me. I can um, I can glue it down, or I can take an X-Acto knife and, and get it right to the edge. Um, so I'll do something with that. But there she is, there's her eye. And pretty, oh, isn't that pretty? I may have to do one in this other material too. I've got this pattern. Again, this is the Pioneer Woman. These were about $8 after tax. And then uh, this pretty one as well. I'm going to do something with them. I just could not resist them. So, so there we go. We have another chicken. Oh, you know what? The little pots that we're going to be doing. Wouldn't that be cute? Oh, my goodness. Now my brain's working. All right, y'all. These little boxes that we're going to be doing. Wouldn't she be cute to put in there or to put on the front or to put, well, I don't know. Well, that would cover up her legs though. But if you could put her in something and then put some, um, something down, some flowers or something down around her, have her sitting. Oh, there's so many things we can do. Now my brain's just going crazy. So I'm going to have to, uh, and I am addicted to doing that now. 
with the iron and material. I'm not afraid of it anymore. So I'm going to have to do something else with it. So what do y'all think? Is this something you think you would enjoy doing? I think it's so pretty. And you could even take um, pieces, scrap pieces of material that you have. Uh, a lot of you are quilters. I know that. And you sew. So you could take um, scrap pieces of your material and, uh, you know, just put different scraps on here. I think I will probably go back and do the, well, let's do that right now. Let's see what that's. Instead of the white highlights on her head, I think I want to do some red just to kind of bring out some more of that color. So let's, let's see what this does. Well, my brush is wanting to separate. Okay, I'm going to bring you back down for just a minute. Thought I was done, but you guys know me. Okay, let's bring some... Just some red right under that white. Brush is trying to separate on me. Okay, we can put some little across the, the neck as well. And then let's put some little dots. Get my larger, larger one. And we'll put some little red dots. Two, three. Turn to the side if I want one. And make that line a little longer. The brush separated and I had to make it thicker. Just a little added something, something. All right, you guys. We did that. Now, of course, I already had it base coated. But we did, did that in under an hour. Or just a little over an hour. When she make a pretty Mother's Day gift? Oop, I don't want my dots to run. Pretty, pretty. Springy, springy. You could even do her legs a different color if you wanted to. But go, don't throw your scrap material away. We know now that we can do other things with it. Um, I think some of the clipboards that I've been doing, that would be pretty on the back of them. Now, once you do it, you're like, okay, your mind just starts filling with all these things that you could do. So much fun. Okay, I just wanted to remind you again, uh, because we're getting close to the deadline to sign up. We've got just a couple of weeks to sign up um, 
on for the paint party on the 28th. We'd love, love to have you. We do have some more seats left. Uh, we've got six or seven that are already coming that I'm aware of. Um, I know some were uh, waiting for uh, some different reasons. Um, we'll be registering in a few days, so uh, we will have some more. But we'll have these there for you to do. You can do them in the color of your choice. And um, I may have a few of these the boxes themselves for sale because I know there are no more in this area that nobody's been able to find any but I have the box I have everything for you and uh, we'll have some uh, a sale table um, and we will have some at least three door prizes at least I may come up with another one I will provide everything that you need except for your lunch. You'll need to bring your lunch or snacks if you just want to snack through lunch because we'll start at 11 and we're going to work through lunch, but you can just sit there and eat and paint um, and we'll just keep going and then we'll learn a few more little techniques that I'm going to have ready for you. So lots of little things um, that we're going to be doing. So it, uh, to register, you will need to go to um, my website, which is youngatheartcreations.com and click on events and it will give you more information about it and tell you how to register if you are um, if you get five people to come with you to register and they put your name as the one that referred them to it then you do not have to pay you if you've already paid I will reimburse you um, and if you have not paid yet you'll just need go in and register but not pay so we'll work that out so I'm still watching for that so hopefully somebody can get a freebie Bring a friend with you and just have a great time painting. It's going to be so much fun. I'm really excited. Okay, I'm going to hop on Tamara Bennett with Southern Adornments Decor. Southern Adornments, that's two O's, Decor. If you'll go to that page, she is painting live right now um, with a design. She's painted the same design every night this week but a different way every night this week. So if you will go hop on there and watch her, I'm going to do the same. Thank you so much, and I will go back through here and uh, pick a name. Uh, I'll, I'm going to wait and get print them all out and then put them in there, and we'll pick a name, and I will announce the winner of the Happy Mail tomorrow. Thanks so much. I appreciate you. Don't forget to sprinkle the video. I appreciate it so much. You guys have a great evening. Good night.